we all share what's going on in our lives. Oh all no, that's us. not true. Every one of us, that is true. You got a horse this season you, and you have a dating coach. Give me a break. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley. And today we are here to discuss The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, season 13, reunion parts two and three. Before we get started, I'm not even gonna hold y'all. They could have kept both parts. Part two gave us nothing. Part three was a complete waste of time. Kyle danced around every single question that Andy had for her and talked in circles. Why was Kathy Hilton there? Can somebody please let me know? Her presence was not needed. Baby, the way I was on your side last season, but Kathy, your slip showed, and now I'm turned off because it really showed how much of a snob you are. And the fact that you think that you wield so much power is beyond me. Sis, you might be wealthy, but at the end of the day, you are a human being just like everybody else. You don't have a heaven or a hell to put anybody in. So for you to say, oh, well, you know, she left that reunion early because she knew that I was coming after her. No. Mm -mm. But without further ado, let's just jump right on into it because you guys already know that we don't have a minute to spare. Like I said, the second part gave us absolutely nothing. I'm not going to waste my time. And y'all know that I'm still healing from wisdom tooth surgery. So I really don't have the energy to go over every single point because nothing really happened. But we open up the second part with the back and forth between Kyle and Dorit about their friendship being on the ropes. I really don't care. Dorit, you were friends with Kyle all this time. You saw how she did other people. So now it's your turn. Kyle is petty, self-centered, no accountability. It's always somebody has slighted her. Somebody's hurt her feelings. She's never in the wrong. So I don't understand why you're fighting so hard for a friendship that's always going to be one-sided. Andy touches on Kyle's sobriety and her lifestyle changes. Of course, he brings up the rumors that Kyle's on Ozempic. Kyle says, hand to God, I'm not on Ozempic. I'm not on any of those medications. This is me and the gym. She goes on to say that she used to be puffy before, but now she's in the gym. She looks great. She works really hard. She can lift a whole bunch of weights now. And I will say this, I think that yes, Kyle has been in the gym. Mama is toned. She looks good, but I would not be surprised if she has taken a little bit of Ozempic on the side. Because let's be clear, Ozempic plus exercise, your body's going to be extra snatched. I think that Kyle is being a bit disingenuous saying, well, I've always worked out. I've worked out since I was 15 because both of my sisters were stick skinny and I was the curvy one. So I always worked out, it's not new. And I said, now Kyle, you've been on this show since season one. I do not recall you ever being this big workout girl. And it's no shade. Kyle has always looked good, but she was never really into fitness like that from what I remember. She's always been into shopping, partying, having a cute drink, being with Mauricio. But now season 13, she's done a complete 180. We see her work out in the gym all the time. She's going on hikes, taking a walk. She loves to be outside. And we didn't see that before. So for her to say, oh, well, I've always been a workout girl. I've always been in the gym. I feel like before you used to have some casual workouts, you would go to Soul Cycle, do some Pilates here and there, but your workout routine was not what it is now. So we can stop that lie. But now they start talking about, was Morgan an influence on her sobriety? Kyle's still talking in circles saying, well, no, because I had only met her once before. I'm just like, okay. I'm not buying it. I think that Kyle is full of it. I think that Morgan is a big reason why she has changed. I do. So for her to say, oh no, um, I had stopped drinking before I met her and you know she didn't influence me at all. I just wanted to stop on my own. I'm not really buying that. But Andy does read a viewer question asking, why were the other women unsupportive of her new sobriety journey? 
And Erica says, well, it's because she never had a problem. So that's why we were all kind of confused. Garcelle says, girl, it was not that serious. Nobody was judging you. It was all in good fun. We'd make a joke here and there. So Kyle also co-signs that she's not really surprised why the women were making jokes and people are confused because it wasn't like she was reckless with alcohol. So because she said the word reckless, Sutton jumps in and she says, well, girl, it was reckless of you to insinuate that I had a drinking problem. And one thing about Kyle Richards, she can never own up to anything. So now we have this whole back and forth between her and Sutton for a good 15 minutes about Kyle denying that she ever said that Sutton has a drinking problem and she pretty much pins it on Dorit. So I said, Kyle, when Dorit made that comment in your kitchen about Sutton looks like she's the type to pour some vodka or some gin in her coffee at 10 a.m., you were sitting up there laughing and cackling and having a cute little key about it. If you really were a good friend, you would have said, you know what, Doree, that's not cool. Don't say that. I understand that you might not be feeling Sutton, but those are serious accusations. Let's not do that. And you stood there and said nothing. So for you to have the audacity to be upset that Sutton is angry at you, rightfully so, I might add, is beyond me. And all throughout this reunion, especially the second part, Kyle refused to take ownership of all the times that she had said nasty things about Sutton. So now we have Kyle launching into yet another sob story about her family and marital issues and how she told the group. So Sutton says, no, you didn't. You didn't tell us anything. So now Dorit jumps in and Dorit says, yeah, all you said was you're having some issues. That's all you told us. We didn't have any details. Baby, the way Kyle snapped. She goes on to say, oh, well, excuse me. I had no idea that you guys were so entitled to know my business. Hold on, let's pause because you are on a reality show where you're supposed to share a good 70% of your business. Kyle, we have seen you press other people, former and present cast members, about how they don't share enough of their lives. So how dare you act like, oh, you guys are so entitled, you guys have no right to demand that I share my life. Well, you are on a show. Kyle, you don't get the right to collect a seven figure check or close to it each season and then decide that you wanna cherry pick what you wanna show. That's not how this works. I rolled my eyes so hard when Kyle went off into her all my life I had to fight speech. She was like, let me tell you all something. I've been on this show for 13 years since the beginning. I've been on here since my youngest daughter was two. I've had three kids go off to college. I've had two siblings on here. You guys have seen the downfall of our relationship. I've shared so much of my life. So excuse me for not wanting to share this. I said, that's all well and good but that does not make up for the fact that you skated by this season. And I noticed that Kyle also does this thing where she wants to pretend like she's just so tired of being on this show and she doesn't know she wants to do this anymore. Well, if you're so tired, sis, then maybe it's time for you to pack your bags and take a break and go off and just relax off camera. But spare us with the sob stories because I can tell you right now, Kyle, we're really tired of you being a perpetual victim. And it was so nasty when Kyle said, Sutton, you haven't shared anything this season. You got on this season just to come after me. Then when she goes on to add, all you gave us this season was you bought a horse and now you have a dating coach, that's it. And I just said, okay, Kyle, but that's better than what you gave us. All you gave us was you talking in circles all season long about what really happened between you and Mauricio and this whole, are you seeing Morgan Wade? You played in all of our faces all season long. At least Sutton gave us some real moments. And also it feels like jealousy for you to say, oh, all you did this season was buy a horse. Are you jealous? Because horses are expensive. And then the upkeep every single year to have a horse, that kind of money is different. And it felt like there was some jealousy when you said that. Andy was over this argument. He says, can we get back to the point, please? Who in this group feels like Sutton has a drinking problem? So you have Dorit saying, well, I don't know. Sutton ate her right on up. She said, Dorit, I don't know if you have a drinking problem. Carcass out. I don't know how many carcasses you have on the floor. I said, oh, get her again. <laughs>
I'ma just scoot on over and let you whack him. Get him again. Get him for me. So now we get to the Dorit segment and I already know that this segment is going to be a bit spicy due to Dorit's comments and her ignorance and then with the friction that she has with Garcelle. So Andy brings up the second robbery. Remember earlier this season, we found out $10,000 was stolen from Dorit. Well, Dorit gives us the full story. She says that she was at Home Goods and everybody was gagged. Andy was like, Dorit Kemsley shops at Home Goods and Marshalls? What? <laughs> but anyhow, she says that she had $10,000 in her purse because that was the money for her staff for Christmas bonuses. So she says when she got to the register, she noticed that her purse was missing and then they went back and watched the cameras and three guys had targeted her. And now Dorit brings up Garcelle's comments. Remember when Garcelle threw that shade about Dorit still having her jewelry after being robbed? Dorit is pissed about that. She says, I went through a mother's worst nightmare and for you to intimate that my robbery in some shape, way or form was staged, how dare you? I said, child, I said, here we go. It's about to be a fight between Garcelle and Dorit. <laughs> Those two just don't like each other. Let's just call a spade a spade. So Garcelle says, let me stop you right there because that's not what I said. I never said that your robbery was fake. I just said that a few things were off. So Dorit's like, like what? So Garcelle says, well, you still had your ring. And I also thought it was strange that a robber would be so kind to leave your phone by the gate. So now Dorit launches into how PK was in London when this happened and how she pleaded with the robber saying, please leave my phone by the gate. I need to reach my husband, please. And so he did it. Dorit goes on to say that it's crazy how Garcelle could go on and peddle a false narrative on national TV. And Garcelle says, I didn't know such thing. My opinions don't change your world. So I guess Garcelle had looked off to the side at this point because you have Dorit saying, the fact that you can look away and not look me in my eye, it says a lot about you. So Garcelle says, if I hurt you with that, I'm very sorry. Dorit accepts her apology. And I just want to say this, Garcelle, I was cringing just a little bit during this exchange. I feel like you threw that shade because you were still angry at Dorit's comments throughout this season. You still have that anger about what happened last season with PK and Mauricio and all them laughing about your son being disrespected by Erica. I think that you having all this resentment towards Dorit you want to throw some shade and you wanted to hurt her feelings. I would have apologized, but I also would have owned it and said, well, I did say it to hurt your feelings and I was being messy. I was being shady and I was being me. I'm not going to sit up here and lie and say, oh no, well, I only said that because I just had a few questions about what happened. No, I said it because I was feeling petty. I was in my feelings and I said that to get a rise out of you. Just own it. You don't like Dorit. Dorit gets under your skin. And you have valid reasons to feel that way. But what you're not going to do is act like you didn't throw that shade about her robbery because you had questions or concerns. You threw that shade because you were angry at her and you wanted her to be upset at what you said. The whole portion about Dorit and PK's marriage, I mean, I wasn't surprised to hear Dorit talking about, oh yeah, we're great now and we're so in love. We're more in love than ever before. The way they all look like, okay, girl, all right. Like if you want to play this game, then we'll play it, but I don't believe a word. And then when Dorit went on to say that PK has stopped drinking, he's been sober for 49 days and how it's helped their marriage tremendously. I said, that's great to hear, but I still don't believe that you and PK are just flourishing. Andy asking Dorit, how does she feel about Kyle not sharing her marital issues while she was bearing her soul about her and PK's issues? And Dorit says that she was hurt. Of course, Kyle's making all these excuses saying that she was trying to figure it out herself and she's been married her entire adult life. I said, Kyle cannot own up to anything. There's always a reason, an excuse, a sob story. It's never Kyle's fault. Kyle can never say, you know what? 
you're right. I should have shared more. It's always, well, no, it's not my fault. And just get off of me. I was trying to navigate this the best way I could. Girl, shut up. I have never seen anybody just so pitiful. I feel like that's the word for Kyle. But yeah, I was so over the whole Kyle and Dorit friendship talk. It's clear that they're strained. Kyle has her head so far up her ass. It's just a mess. Dorit, like I told you in the first recap, if I were you, I would not even try to repair this friendship. It would be a cute, hi, bye. We can be social friends. We can be acquaintances or associates, castmates, and call it a day. So now we get to Erica's segment, and y'all know how I feel about Erica Jane. So we're going to breeze through her segment quickly because I don't have the time. So Andy starts it off by bringing up the shade that Sutton threw about Erica's Vegas residency tickets being $7. So you have Erica and Kyle making faces. Sutton's like, oh my gosh, it was just a joke. Kyle's like, no, just own it. I said, Kyle, not you of all people saying that somebody has to own anything. What do you own? Also, for Erica to act so offended and say, oh, that's a shitty thing to say. Baby, we can go down the list of all the nasty things that you've said about everybody, especially Sutton. And also, let's not forget how you threw that shade at Denise Richards earlier on at Crystal's Taco Tuesday party. Did you not ask Denise Richards who makes more money on OnlyFans, you or your daughter? And you were also shading Denise Richards about her being on OnlyFans for $7. So it's okay when you do it, but God forbid somebody makes a joke about your low ticket sales. Now it's an issue. Erica is the epitome of she can dish it out, but she can't take it. And just when you thought that Erica couldn't be nastier, Andy brings up how she recently met up with the victims of her ex-husband's fraudulent schemes. So she says that under the advice of her counsel, she met up with them. She thought that it was important for them to see that she is a person and not a reality TV show. The way Andy was looking at her like, that's all you have to say, he goes on to ask her, can you better explain why you met with them? And Erica says, no, I can't. It is crazy to me how it's almost like she has no emotion. So anyhow, Andy goes on to ask Erica, has she learned anything? And Erica says, yeah, I actually did learn something. I learned that one of my paychecks was in a client's trust fund. I mean, if that's not a way to say, I don't give a damn, stop asking me about the victims, I don't care, then I don't know what is. And you see how Erica snaps every time somebody challenges her? Because when Andy brought up how Tom has been diagnosed with dementia, but the court has ruled that he's still competent to stand trial, and they were all confused by that. And then Crystal jumped in and said, well, you guys know my story. My father has Alzheimer's. And if that's the case, I'm confused by this because how can Tom stand trial if he's been diagnosed with dementia? So now you have Erica talking about, is Crystal trying to say that Tom is faking? Is that what she's saying? And I said, baby, let's get all this bass out of your voice. Also, Crystal is sitting right across from you. So why are you talking about her like she's not there? I don't understand why Erica has all this smoke for everybody else except for Tom. Tom is the one who effed everybody over and you. So why are you still talking about Tom with this grace and this loving affection? It's weird. Since they're on a short break, we see that Kathy Hilton has arrived. She's getting made up. And of course we see Kathy pretending like she's so ditzy and has no idea what she's saying. And she's spilling tea that she shouldn't be spilling about Kyle and Mauricio. So she goes on to say that Kyle and Mauricio have been going their separate ways for a long time. You have Mauricio on Dancing with the Stars now. And then she says that Kyle is not an impulsive person. She didn't just decide to leave Mauricio. This has been festering for the past three or four years. Again, the whole act felt so phony with Kathy saying, oh my gosh, I shouldn't have said that, but here I am just running my mouth. Girl, you want to say that. So now the break is over and we end this second part with Sutton segment. So Andy's talking about Sutton's behavior when they were at Magic Mike. 
Then he brings up the issues that she was having with Erica about that whole elevator stunt. And then Andy touches on the situation between Sutton and her ex-husband Christian and how he wanted her to move to London with him and their youngest son, James. So Sutton shares that she told James that she would not be moving and he was like, oh, okay. And how that was a big deal for her because throughout their marriage, her voice was pretty much stifled. And he points out that a lot of the women who get on the show, they all of a sudden find their voice. Now the power dynamic in the marriage has changed. So now Sutton says, since we're talking about that, I do want to say, Kyle, it really hurt my feelings for you to say that all I brought this season was a cashmere line and a horse because that's not true. Kyle's like, well, we all say things and we're angry. And how do you think I felt at my weed dinner when you were pressing me about my marriage? I said, oh my gosh, if you don't let that weed dinner go. And I was getting more annoyed that Sutton sort of let Kyle get away with the BS. Now, when Andy brought up Sutton's alimony payments, and then he went on to ask Anna Marie, how does she feel hearing Sutton talk about her money? And then Anna Marie says, oh, well, you know, I'm married to an athlete and we're friends with all these celebrities and A-listers and people who have so much money who don't speak about money. It's rude and it's tacky. I said, hold on. Sutton didn't just bring up her money. The viewers did because that article came out about how much she got in her divorce. Andy was the one who asked her in the clubhouse, do you really get that much money per month? And Sutton said, well, more or less after taxes, it might be a bit more. But let's not act like Sutton was going around saying, oh yeah, I get all this money per month. I'm just so wealthy. She didn't do that. And also Anna Marie, let's not because you're the same woman who was serving Corbell at your party. But again, Anna Marie, I guess you had to say something because that was your first time speaking this entire part. I forgot that Anna Marie was there. So now Andy circles back to the state of Sutton and Kyle's friendship. And Kyle says, well, I don't know where we stand because Sutton's in the press saying that our friendship is a farce. And I was like, okay, but you were the one who was also in the press saying that you wanted to have a friendship break from Sutton. Andy brings up Teddy's Watch What Happens live appearance when she insinuated that Sutton is an alcoholic and carries vodka in her purse. And Sutton says to Kyle, how come you didn't defend me when Teddy said that? That was very careless of Teddy and you just sat there. And so Kyle says, well, I could have said a lot more, but I didn't. I said, now Kyle, had that been somebody saying something about you, you will be the first one crying about, oh my gosh, why would you let them say that about me? Why didn't you defend me? But now you have excuses for why you didn't defend Sutton when Teddy said that. I don't care how you feel about Sutton, that wasn't right. The same way you guys get on Sutton anytime she says something, you guys were angry at Sutton when she made that comment about a woman being in the car with PK the night he got pulled over for that DUI. Y'all wanted her to apologize for that. And the fact that Kyle still could not offer up an apology when Sutton brought up how Kyle insinuated this season that she was on pills and that she's anorexic and Kyle was sitting there looking so dumb. I said, Kyle, was it last season or was it season 11 where you shared that when you were younger, you also battled with disordered eating yourself. So for you to make that claim that Sutton is anorexic, that's disgusting. You would think that you would be more empathetic because you yourself said that you dealt with that too. And that's why I'll always be here for anybody getting on Kyle because Kyle is very nice nasty. And now we see Sutton say that Kyle has been relentlessly mean to her throughout her time on this show. Kyle's playing dumb saying, when, when have I been mean to you? And Sutton says, in the words of Denise Richards, watch the show. Now Sutton, let me just get on you quickly because why didn't you go into detail about all the times when Kyle has bullied you on this show? There are so many examples and you drop the ball by just saying, well, watch the show. No, give Kyle the clear examples. So the purpose of that music video was what? You know, she was on tour at the time, and then she was going to be playing at Stagecoach. And she said, I, I want to come do this for you to support you for, you know, the event for Laureen. But then you have to be in one of my videos. 
So now we open up the last part of this reunion with the continuation of Sutton and Kyle going at it. And you have Andy interrupting and he wants to know, where do they go from here? Sutton and Kyle both say that they're going to be fine and now they hug it out. I said, you know what, Sutton? I've officially washed my hands. If you want to sit up here and take Kyle's BS each season and then cry about how poorly she treats you, then be my guest. I've done my job. You obviously like it. So who am I to be more invested than you are? Clearly, there's something about Kyle that you just want to be around. It feels like a self-esteem issue because you cannot tell me that somebody who has treated you so poorly deserves to have another spot in your life. I don't get it. And Sutton, what really pissed me off was when you guys were hugging and you whispered to Kyle, I'm sorry about everything. I said, you didn't do anything to Kyle. Kyle was nasty to you. What are you apologizing for? Now, we all agree that this last part gave us nothing. So I'm not even going to spend a whole lot of time on each section, okay? I'm going to only talk about the parts that I care about. So Kathy Hilton comes out. They play the montage of... Kathy, Kyle, and Kim's relationship, the ups and downs throughout the years. So Andy starts it off by asking Kathy, how did she feel watching Erica say that the women are afraid of Kathy because she can shut people out of the social circle in Beverly Hills? So you have Kathy fake crying. I said, it's so sad. Kathy can't even squeeze out a tear. She was trying her hardest and no tears came out. But that's what happens when you don't have emotions. But I digress. So Kathy says, I played that part several times and I sent that to friends. And I said, okay, but you didn't answer the question. How did you feel when you saw that Erica said that? Kathy couldn't even come up with anything because she knows that she enjoys having that power over people. She likes having people suck up to her because she's powerful because of who she's married to. She loves it. So now you have Erica interrupting saying that she said that because Kathy is Beverly Hills and a lot of women are afraid of her. And while she's speaking, Sutton starts shaking. Everybody's shocked. And he's like, wait, Sutton, are you okay? Everybody jumps up to check on Sutton. Garcelle's like, can you guys please call somebody? It's serious. We see the paramedics come. And mind you, everybody has gotten up to check on Sutton except for Kathy and Erica. They're both talking. Kathy's on her phone. I said, can you guys show people anymore that you guys have no emotions? Because you're telling me that one of your cast members is violently shaking something is visibly wrong and you don't have any concern? And Erica, when did you and Kathy become close again? Because the last time I checked, Erica, you were trying to expose Kathy for being a racist homophobe. That's what I remember last year. You and Rena both were trying to set Kathy up. So now you're all buddy-buddy smiling in her face, showing all 32 teeth. Girl, you're a kiss up just like everybody else. Because if this were me, if I really thought that you were a racist and you were homophobic, I would not be talking to you. We would not be chopping it up. So the paramedics are there. They're checking Sutton's blood pressure, checking her pulse. They say that both are high. And now we see Kathy call out, oh, Sutton, it was bound to happen. You're 49. Kathy, if you knew like I knew, you were better off staying home and not showing up because you made yourself look so bad. So Andy tells Sutton that she can leave the reunion early. He tells her to go back to her trailer, get changed, and she walks off. Garcelle is with her, and now we see Sutton laying down, and she's getting ready to go to the hospital. So we now see Kathy say, oh, that's a great way to leave early. And then she says to Kyle, she knew that I was going to get her. That's why she got scared. I was like, girl, what? Please, Kathy, do not ever think that you're so powerful that you're the reason why Sutton had a medical emergency. Who do you think you are? And Kathy, you need a reality check. I really feel like Kathy thinks that she's above it all because of her status. And not to sound preachy, but 
at the end of the day, no matter where you fall economically, none of us are taking any of this with us when we leave this earth. And I don't care what religion you are, whether you don't believe in anything, the only guarantee is we are all going to die. And when that day comes, you're not taking your purses with you, you're not taking your shoes with you, not your bank accounts, not your money, nothing. So for Kathy to put so much stock in her status and her material items, baby, when you leave this earth, what's going to become of it? I'll wait. And I feel like Kathy thinks that she's on some godlike level where things are going to stop just because she says so. And that's not the case. And again, Kathy, you need a wake up call. And it was evident of what kind of upbringing you guys had with the way you were acting throughout this reunion. It was clear that the stories about how your mother raised y'all are all true. And I'll just leave it at that. Again, y'all, if you have not read The House of Hilton, please read it, please. So Sutton and Garcelle are gone and now we resume the reunion and Andy goes on to ask Kathy if she thought that her and Kyle were done. So Kathy says never, and then she says something to the effect of they've only had three major fights, but the press likes to act like they fight all the time. And I said, Kathy, do not try to rewrite history. We all know that you feel like your sister should just fall in line because you're the oldest. So of course, Andy brings up how Mauricio starting the agency and leaving Hilton and Highland put a wedge between them. And Kathy does cop to it. She says that the agreement was Mauricio wouldn't poach Rick's clients and he did. So Kyle interrupts and she says, I don't wanna talk about all this girl, let's not do it. I have always felt like the real reason why Rick and Kathy were angry at Mauricio for leaving and starting his own thing because they wanted Mauricio to be under them. I think that Rick liked the fact that Mauricio worked for him and that they weren't on the same level financially. With the environment that Kyle, Kathy, and Kim grew up in, their mom pretty much forced them to be competitive with each other. And I think that that competitive nature seeped out into adulthood where Kathy wanted to be the sister who was the wealthiest. And Mauricio starting his own thing might mean that Kyle and Mauricio might be on their level. And we see that Mauricio did very well, but unfortunately people have that mentality where you can do well, but you can't do better than them. And dynamics change, and I've talked about this several times, even in my own life with friends who've now fallen by the wayside because I'm doing really well. And we could talk all about that for days, y'all, because y'all, y'all, if you've been following me for quite some time, you know the stories. But again, let me not get off on a tangent. But I really do feel like the core of Kathy being angry at Mauricio and Kyle was due to resentment and jealousy and competition where it's like, how dare you catch up to me? We were always the wealthiest and now there's a chance that you could be just as wealthy or wealthier than us. Just my two cents. But we've been hearing about this story with Kyle and Mauricio and Rick and Kathy for the longest time. I don't really care anymore. I'm tired. We keep rehashing the same old stuff. It's enough already. But Kyle goes on to say that her and Kathy made up because of their niece, Whitney, Kim's daughter. It was at her bridal shower. They had seen each other. They had talked and that's how they became close again. So this is the part that I was waiting for. I think that I can say this for everybody. We were all waiting for this. We finally get to Kyle and Mauricio's strained marriage and what changed, what led them there. If you were waiting for Kyle to reveal any information, you were sorely mistaken. She says, well, you know how it is. Every marriage has their problems and their issues. And I was so wrapped up in working and being a mommy. And I'm like, girl, answer the damn question. What was the event 
that led to you and Mauricio separating? Like, just answer the question. Andy wants to know the $64 million question. Was it something that Mauricio did that led you to lose trust in him? Of course, Kyle starts crying. I said, oh my gosh, Kyle is giving us waterworks and no answers. Girl, just tell us what happened. Kyle says that she really put her family first. She really did try and that some things were apparent to her that she couldn't brush off anymore and she just couldn't do it. So we're all like, girl, what are these things that became apparent? I'm going to take a guess. It sounds like he was cheating and she was turning a blind eye and then the cheating got so bad that she just couldn't take it anymore and now she's over it. I feel like I'm more confused now than I was at the beginning of the season. Now Andy asks, did the rumors about Mauricio cheating cause you to lose trust? And she says, yes, it did chip away at her trust and it also made her insecure. Kyle, let's stop the BS. It chipped away at your confidence because from what you're saying, it appears that the rumors were actually true and he was cheating on you. That's why you became insecure. And then you have Kathy chiming in saying, oh yeah, when you're a high profile person, they say things to make you feel bad. Girl, can you stop? Why are you even here, Kathy? You're not bringing anything. So now Mauricio being on Dancing with the Stars gets brought up and Kyle says that if they were in a better place, she would not have signed off on that. And I was like, okay, like, damn. Andy reads a viewer question asking Kyle, why is she so tight lipped? about her marital issues. And Kyle snaps and says, because it's nobody's effing business. Now, again, Kyle, you signed up to talk about your life and your issues. And how dare you bite the hand that feeds you by saying it's nobody's business. If you do not want to share, then get off the show. And did anybody think it was shady of Kathy to jump in and say, well, honestly, for the past two or three years, you guys have been going in different directions. You've been traveling a lot. And it just felt like she was low key trying to blame Kyle for the reason why her and Mauricio are at a bad point. It almost felt like, well, had you not been traveling so much, had you not been working so much, you might have been able to save your marriage. That's what it felt like. So now we get to the whole Morgan Wade relationship slash friendship. Andy reads the viewers comments about Kyle and Morgan's chemistry being electric how every time Kyle's around Morgan, she's blushing and she's giddy like a schoolgirl. And he wants to know, what does the group think? And now Andy asks the group, what do they think about Kyle and Morgan? Do they think that they're together? So everybody's scared to answer. And I said, why are y'all so quiet? Kyle is not going to do anything to you guys. Y'all have been talking about this in your confessionals all season long about how it looks. So don't be quiet now. But Crystal speaks up and says that when she saw the pictures, she did think that Kyle and Morgan were together. And now you have Kathy jumping in and she says, yeah, me and Crystal went out to lunch and Crystal told me that she thinks that they're together. So Andy turns to Doree and he's like, Doree, what did you think? So Doree's trying to beat around the bush and then she says, well, they do have a lot of pictures together on Instagram. And I did think to myself at one point, are they together? Because they do look like two girlfriends. So now the whole topic comes up about Morgan's music video. Remember, it's a sexy music video with her and Kyle, where Kyle plays the sexy next door neighbor, who is her love interest. And they kiss at the end. So Crystal jumps in and she's like, when did you guys film the video? And you have Kyle trying to say, wait, what, when or why? And Crystal says, when did you film the video? Like, what's the timeline? So Kyle's rambling on. She says that they filmed the video before the announcement came out about her and Mo separating. And then Andy jumps in to ask, what was the purpose of the video? And the way Kyle kept rambling, I said, Kyle, if you like this woman, then just say that. It is okay, it is 2024. Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody's going to laugh at you. You guys have talked so many times about would you ever get with a woman? 
Garcelle has said that she's had a threesome before. Erica's had a threesome. I mean, a lot of these women have had girl on girl experiences. Just tell the truth because the chemistry between you and Morgan, you can't hide that. And Kyle started talking in that weird voice, the same voice that Kathy uses from time to time when she's uncomfortable. And I was like, Kyle, why are you doing that? It's a simple question. What was the purpose of the music video? So Kyle finally says that she was definitely curious to say yes to the video. And I said, okay, I guess we're getting something from Kyle. I mean, it wasn't much, but she's finally admitting that she is a bit curious. And it's bizarre to see Kyle act so tight lipped and nervous when for the past eight months, we've been seeing her gallivanting with Morgan. They've been on vacation together, matching tattoos. We see them out and about getting frozen yogurt, going out for dinner. I mean, they're always out and about. They look like two girlfriends. Kyle, deep down inside, you are loving all this attention because if you wanted to keep this quiet, you guys would not be out and about the way you guys have been for the past eight months. And when Kyle said, well, obviously I said yes to the video, for a reason, and Morgan is hot, what can I say? And I said, again, Kyle, you're telling us what we already know. We know that you are attracted to Morgan. So we're down to the last five minutes of this reunion, and Andy asks what we've been dying to know. He's like, Kyle, are you guys together? And you have Kyle playing coy. She's like, what do you mean, in that way? And Andy says, yes, are you guys together? Kyle says, no. Andy was staring at her like, why are you BSing me right now? But he just let it go. He just dropped it. But everybody else was staring like, okay, girl, if you want to tell this lie, then I guess, but all right. So now Andy's asking if Kyle has feelings for her. And Kyle says, no, she's my friend. I love her, but she's my friend. And then Andy says, well, in the future, do you see yourself with Morgan? And Kyle says, well, I don't know. I'm always evolving. I don't know what the future holds. So we end the reunion there. And y'all, I was disappointed. I feel like that was a waste of everybody's time. I feel like it's unfair to tease a salacious storyline like this and then pretty much flop at the reunion by skating by questions and talking in circles, talking in code, and not addressing anything. And yes, this season was a cute season, but it could have been a lot better. And again, I think that we are all left confused, trying to put the pieces together, and trying to figure out what Kyle meant when she said certain things. Kyle, either say what's really going on in your life, for season 14 or keep it on the playground and stay home. But what you did, especially in this last part, was unacceptable and I was beyond irritated. But y'all, that was my double recap. We are done with Beverly Hills. I'm happy about that. And yeah, let me know what you guys think. I know that a lot of y'all were pissed the same way that I was. But again, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and you already know what to do. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all later. Bye.